Hey everyone, so I'm coming to you for week two of our Grace podcast. Um, I'm so excited this week to have Jess joining me. Um, Jess Basson is married to Tom Basson, if her surname sounds familiar. Um, Tom is one of our co-senior pastors and Jess is his amazing wife. She is a published author, a recently published author, which is so awesome. And I'm hoping she'll share a little bit about that with us today. Um, she is also a speaker. Um, she is a preaching pastor here at Grace Family Church, and she's actually been on staff for the last um, 15 years, which is half my lifetime. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> we are very excited to have her join us today. Thanks for coming, Jess. Thanks for having me, Kerry. Uh, I love having conversations with you, and it is such a privilege to be able to have one where people can sit like a fly on the wall and listen to us and um, hopefully learn from us from us and laugh with us because we tend to do both of those things when we chat definitely definitely <laughs> so Jess um this week um as I mentioned to you and as if any of our listeners have been watching we are working on the series dare to dream and this week we are in week two where Joseph finds himself in a prison so we came from last week where Joseph found himself in a pit um you interviewed Nande Boss which was in a phenomenal um podcast interview that we did so if you missed that please go and check it out on our YouTube channel um so for today we're talking about where Joseph finds himself in the prison and um Jess you've actually had a bit of a metaphorical experience with finding yourself in a prison so I'd love if you could tell us a little bit about that yeah thanks Kerry I'm glad it's a metaphor I've never actually been in jail um but I am one of those people who is so terrified of the police I always think I'm going to get into trouble even if I've done nothing wrong um, and so yeah it was quite a shock to me to find that actually I had been living in a prison and um I, I, I call it the cage I found myself in um, because as I looked back on my 20s and my 30s, I realized that I had lost a part of myself that um, I know I had started out with. And I remember saying to Tom, you know, like, what happened to me? I, I, feel like, I feel like I've settled for smallness somewhere in my life. I feel like I've been caged in. And it was really hard for me to find language for what that cage was. Um, I had struggled with postnatal depression after having kids um, and I had wrestled with my calling, my place in the world, my contribution to the world because I constantly felt like I just couldn't keep up. I wasn't good enough. I felt like nothing I did um, seemed to be able to break me out of some of the cycles that I lived in and they were the same patterns over and over again. And what ended happening was the cage, the prison that I found myself in was a set of lies. They were a set of beliefs that I believed about myself. I believed that I was lazy, that I could never finish what I started, that um, I just wasn't high capacity and couldn't keep up, um, that I wasn't the sort of person who uh, would just accomplish a lot with their lives. And it was partly because I think people looked at me and they saw a duck sort of on a pond, but I knew that underneath my feet were doing this just to stay above water. So I, I kind of just believed I, I was just a lazy person. doesn't matter how hard I work, I can't seem to accomplish what normal people seem to be able to do. Um, the other lie that I believed about myself was that, um, that I was hazy. Like I am just one of those people, and you all know this, that who you know, leaves her keys and loses her handbags and um, forgets to fetch the kids and arrives late for things. And I just always felt like I was one step behind and a bit confused all the time. And again, no one really could see the cage that I was in because um, I spent a lot of energy and hard work masking how much I was struggling um, and kind of keeping up the facade that I was on top of things that I knew I wasn't. And then finally, the last sort of lie that um, is so sad, but in that, um, <laughs> I know it's not true. And that was that I was crazy. I just felt like, I felt like I was losing my mind. I was emotionally unregulated. I was reactive. I was defensive. Um, I was so sensitive to uh, criticism. And a lot of that was because of the shame I was carrying that um, I just wasn't good enough. And, and that, was, that was a prison I found myself in that was affecting my marriage, my ministry, my parenting. Um, and it, I found myself in quite a dark place um, when my kids were small. 
because I just didn't have language. Um, I couldn't name my cage. I couldn't explain what was going on in my life. Sure, and I mean, that's powerful because like you say, it's the naming it that, is, that has helped you acknowledge what's been going on. And I think for so many of us, um, and I say us because me included, I can identify with so many of those things that you have said now. Um, it, it's something that we feel is just us. Only I'm going through this. Only I've experienced this. Only I feel this about myself. Um, so it's, it's great to know that there's someone else who has felt that way and who's gone through similar things. Right. It's oh, yeah. so in itself that is liberating. Um, but I'd like to know then, how did you use that place? How did you move from it being a, a place of being in a cage, as you say, or being from a place of being in a prison to actually being like what you've once said to me before, being from a prison to a platform? Can you maybe explain a bit about that? Yeah, and I think you've nailed it already without even knowing it. But um, what was liberating is that when you name your cage, you find your freedom. And as, if you don't know what, your, what the name of your problem is, what the name of your struggle is, of course, you're going to get stuck in cycles trying to find a solution, trying to find a way out. Um, and so for me, what happened was um, when my oldest son was little, he was only about uh, six or seven years old, he was diagnosed with ADHD. And I took a deep dive into just wanting to understand um, what his world was like and realized in that process that I have ADHD. And this was what unlocked my cage, Kerry, because basically the lies were replaced with truth. And Jesus says the truth will set you free. And I found freedom to be able to say, you know what, this is not a character issue. This is a neurological problem. And there is support. And when I name my cage, I can find my freedom by getting the correct support. And so the way that that developed into a platform, into finding purpose from my pain, was I started to tell my story. And it's exactly that. People think they're the only ones. People feel like they're alone. And when you start to tell your story um, and, and, and to actually say, you know what, this is what I'm going through. This is what I'm struggling with. You realize there's hundreds of people out there sticking up their hands and going, oh, me too. You're not alone. Um, and so as I started to tell my story um, and look back on my life and see the truth of what I had been living with, this undiagnosed ADHD had been there all the time, right from my school days to high school to varsity. Um, that's where my book came from. And it, it still amazes me that God took this place of, in, of pain and transformed it into purpose, where sharing my story of you're not alone and giving other people permission to name their cages, ask for help, share their stories um it it became it, it, it does feel I feel like I'm in a palace I feel like I've arrived in a place where I can show up as I am um and give other people permission to do that and um and hopefully in that way make a difference yeah that makes such sense and I like how you're saying about the the truth being what has set you free as well um and so i, I want to know as well when you found yourself in um this prison in this cage of um trying to figure out okay if this is what i've been diagnosed with and i can separate it being neuro neurological um, and not a character-based thing was there any time in that um where there was maybe a confusion with god and going okay god like why did this happen to me? Why did it go so long being undiagnosed? Was there any anger? Um, you know, can you maybe tell us a bit about that? Yeah, that's such a good question because I think the thing that I had to bring to God was there were two things that I really needed his help with. Um, for me, there was shame um, that I had to forgive myself for the hurt that I'd caused when I wasn't in a good place. Um, and I had to forgive myself for uh yeah not not being able to care for and love and for hurt people hurt people and I definitely hurt people along the way I remember a colleague of ours um Mads who started our counseling ministry many years ago she came to me once early days and she said you know Jess um you, you know I've just seen this habit that you have where you react um very strongly and and, and you come out um very defensive and when I heard her say that, I was like, no, I don't, which is like the most ironic thing I could ever have done. 
and I came out boxing and I was I felt attacked and and that was a microcosm of many times where I didn't have the skills so there was a a, a process of healing and forgiveness and saying to my family and friends be like hey guys I'm sorry you know I I'm sorry I was doing my best um but I can do better now and I have more faith I can show up as my best self because I'm getting support I couldn't do it on my own I needed support and the second thing was um, regret. Um, I felt shame. I felt regret. And I really had to actually believe that God's grace um, could take, like the story of Joseph says so beautifully, take what the enemy meant for harm and turn it for good. Um, I looked behind me and I had to actually believe that the legacy and the wake that I'd left in, in my weakness and um, that God would bring healing and life and um, and do what he does best, which is take something broken and turn it into something beautiful. Um, and so that was a journey that I walked with God uh, up and down. It was not up and to the right and a linear process. It fell and fell forward and fell forward and receive forgiveness, give forgiveness. Um, and that, that was a big part of the journey for me. I, I totally agree with you. And I think with everything we go through in life as well, we felt we never feel like it's a con continuous upward trajectory. Like you say, it's up and then down again and up and then down again. Um, if there's yeah. maybe any of our listeners who are finding themselves where they felt like they had started making process and progress where they are maybe finding themselves caged um, mm -hmm. and in a dark place, is there maybe something practical um, that you can give to them in order for to help them to maybe make that next right step that's going to lead them up again? Definitely, Kerry. And again, I never did these things um, as intentionally as I think I can and, and many others could, I, I definitely stumbled into them. But for me, um, honest, faithful friendships, they, they saved my life. Like friends who had the empathy and compassion to see when I was struggling, but also held up a mirror to me and gave me a perspective. Um, and so if you are feeling like you're in a dark place right now, maybe you've disappointed yourself or, you know, you've disappointed people. You feel like you've disappointed God, which you can't do, but I know what it's like to feel that way. Um, to actually, again, I keep coming back to it, but name your cage. Give language and tell somebody that you are struggling. Um, tell someone, reach out and cultivate relationships with real people, like I have loved the input that I've got online. I've listened to podcasts, I've read books, I follow Instagram accounts. Some of them are like really deep and helpful and some of them are hilarious and I love them all, but there's nothing, there is no replacement for human community. Um, and so if you're in a dark place, that's a good starting point. Um, and the second thing, honestly, is professional help. Um, whether it's a therapist, whether it's a dietitian, whether it's a financial debt advisor, whether it's a recovery meeting, whether it's marriage counseling, whether it's an intervention for your child at school with an OT, or when you name your cage, you find your freedom. And so face the reality of what you are dealing with, give it a name, diagnose your condition, whether it's I'm lonely or I'm in debt, and then go to someone who is more skilled than you and ask for help. And I, I, it's, that's not an easy process. It sounds simple. It's hard. It's vulnerable. It's going to require courage and candor. And you're going to have to put on your big girl panties and get on with it. Um, but I know that leads to freedom. I've experienced it myself. Sure. That's phenomenal. Honestly, that's, and I love that it, I asked you for practical and that is practical. It's something that you can tangibly go, I'm going to hold on to this thing. And that's what my next thing is going to do I think too often we surrounding ourselves with everything going on so thank you for being able to give us that one thing we can hold on to and and take forward so what I'd like to know and I'm sure all our listeners would like to know is where do you find yourself today how where do you find yourself um I find myself if I take a long view I find myself in such a good place I feel um, more self-acceptance. I feel closer to God. I feel like I am helping other people, um, which makes me feel so much better about the long-term journey that I've been on. Um, the, the, when I zoom out, Kerry, I honestly feel like I have one of the most amazing, incredible lives. Like I, I'm in awe. 
on any given day, if I zoom in, you could find me crying in the fetal position on my bed or screaming at my kid or sulking about something. Um, and so it's almost like the struggles continue and the ups and downs and the habits. And I, I, I have not arrived, but I've grown. And I think for all of us, um, you know, to take the moments to zoom out and to look at where you were five years ago, look at where you were 10 years ago and, and, you know, pat yourself on the back, say thanks to God, honor, you know, the work of the Holy Spirit and, and the presence of Jesus in your life and how he's taken you on a journey. And when you zoom in and you see, oh my word, this is a hot mess. Um, that's okay too. Um, and I think that's probably where I would find myself say I find myself today. Sure. I love that. Thank you for being so real. Um, I would like to, just as we start to wrap up, I would like to just say um, for any of our listeners who are maybe looking to read your book and read your story in more detail, um, where are they able to find that? So if you go to jessbasson.com, um, there'll be three places you could get the book there. There'll be, you can order it and I'll courier it to your house. You can read it on Kindle or on my website are the places that actually stock my book. Um, and because I've self-published, I'm just partnering with amazing friends like Shana and Pascal at Now Coffee, who've got my book in their beautiful coffee shop. So you won't be able to find it in exclusive books or any of the bookstores because it's a little baby that I brought into the world all on my own. And um, so my website, jessbasson.com is the best place to go and see where the nearest and most convenient place to be would yeah, for you, wherever you are in the world. <laughs> awesome. I love that. And I'd really encourage people to also, they find themselves in this place to grab a copy, um, share it with your friends. If finances are tight, you know, it's, it's something to be, to be shared and to learn from. Um, and it's, it's something so great and practical that we don't have too much of that is locally written. So I absolutely yeah. love that. Um, as a closing statement from you, Jess, I'd love to know, is there a takeaway that you would like our listeners to, to know? Is there something that is one statement, one thing that they can take into this week ahead um, that they can have stuck and written on their hearts? Well, there is because I have been immersing myself in the life of Joseph and, um, and I, I saw a pattern in, in Joseph's life that when I look at the story that I've been living out over the last few years, um, I'm, I know it's true, not just because I've experienced it, but because it's in the word of God. Um, and that is that whatever you're going through, if it's a pit, if it's a prison, in, in Joseph's case, part of his house where, you know, it, things went really pear-shaped for him, I've, I've realized this, that maybe, maybe, what God is doing inside of you in the prison is what he's going to ask of you in the palace. And whatever dream you're dreaming, that person that you want to become, God is doing something inside of you right now that that girl over there, that person over there is going to need inside of them. God is upskilling you. God is developing muscle in you. God is teaching you how to problem solve, how to think, how to come to him. And maybe, maybe as much as it might suck where you are right now, what God is doing in you in the prison, he's going to ask of you in the palace. And I'm grateful. Um, I, I'm grateful for the pain because God transformed it into purpose. And I know he can do that for anyone. Yeah, sure. That's so profound Jess I really appreciate that thank you and that's encouraged me as well even um yeah. so I'd love to pray with you if you're okay with that as we close love please awesome <laughs> so heavenly father I thank you for this time that we've had with Jess today I thank you for the incredible purpose that you have placed in her life I thank you that as we've been talking about you've taken her from a place of being in a dark place and being in a prison in a cage to a place of enlightenment um, and to a place of being on a platform. And we know that that platform is not for her um, and for herself, but it's for your glory, Lord God. And I thank you for this message that she's able to spread um, to glorify you, to help others along their purpose and their calling, Lord God. And I just pray for expansion of borders for her, that even as your word says that you are extending those tent pegs, um, I pray that you continue to ex extend those 10 pegs for Jess Thank as she's you. pursuing this calling and this purpose that you have placed on her life. 
I thank you for your protection over her. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm, thank you, Kerry. Amen. Thanks so much, Jess, for being with us. And thank you for having me. It's been a great time with you. Awesome. Cheers. Bye.